Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we're at the Church of St. Vincent de Paul, uh, just outside of downtown St. Louis. Um, this was a church founded by Vincentians, a uh, French group, but uh, it was German immigrants that really built this church and made it what it is. So I have two Germans here with me today to talk about the organ here behind us. This is an 1874, we think. We J don't know for sure. We have not seen yet the uh, um, yeah. contract of the builder with the church or so, but it was built uh, probably before the Shrine of St. Joseph, which is one of his other prominent instruments. And if you want to see, we actually visited that. There's a link up there. You can go check it out and see uh, Martin's restoration of that instrument. But this yeah. one probably is a little bit earlier, we think, then. Yeah, it, it was before St. Joseph. St. Joseph was built in 1890, mm -hmm. and uh, as you heard, this one might have been built in 74. And I, I read that maybe that case is actually an, an earlier Pilcher organ. We don't know for sure. Um, yeah, it's very similar to the case of the Shrine of St. Joseph. Uh, and, and we haven't said, that's J.G. Pfeffer's organ up there. He was actually a member of this church. His daughter got married here, we know and live just a block or so away. This organ was only built just uh, well, in the neighborhood. Well, I think his shop was uh, yeah. supposedly about a block away. We uh, haven't researched that in detail well, yet. Well, but, but it's uh, good because it's a big organ. It's one of his biggest instruments that we know of right. uh, that's built in there. Do we know how many ranks we have up there? No, we have to find that out. All right, so, we're, gonna, uh, we're well, gonna go take a look. Sadly, the instrument is not really in playing condition, but uh, a lot of it's very original, so we're gonna go see what we've got up there and uh, see what we can see. My name is Father Ed Murphy. I'm a Vincentian priest and the pastor, current pastor of St. Vincent's. Um, I'm the latest in a very long line. We're just concluding, celebrating our 175th anniversary as a parish. And we began, I just found this out recently from the Archdiocesan Archivist, that we were the first church in St. Louis that did things for their people in both German and in English. That most churches chose one or the other language, but from the very beginning we did them in both languages. And so I think that says a lot about where we are currently. We reached out to immigrants back then, and now our mission has shifted its focus to trying to be of help and assistance to those living in poverty, um, largely homeless people and people who've had a very difficult time in life and we try to do what we can do here to be of assistance to them to help them find a home and a community um, where they can get their basic needs met and they're also always welcome to be a part of whatever the community is doing i i am not by nature a historian but i know that this is a very important organ because it's one of a few in St. Louis built by the same person. And it, it was working for a long time. When I, I've been the pastor eight and a half years, but I've lived in St. Louis 40 years. And from the very beginning, even though I had other jobs, I used to come down here regularly and help out. And so when I first came here, it was working and it sounded great and there's really nothing no other instrument like a pipe organ i mean it's just there there's nothing else that that compares and so but you could hear over the years that it was not getting better if anything it was getting more difficult to play and um we we decided we never were going to have it torn out and put in and do something more modern and electric 
and uh, I mean the hope has always been that we would find some way to restore it and not only be able to use it for our own congregation but offer it to people for for organ concerts for you know groups that love pipe organ music that that we would be happy to be a place where people could do that so we'll we'll see what we can do going forward <laughs> We know it's getting some wind because we have a cipher already playing as soon as we turn the organ on. Dennis Wells. I am uh, the director of music and liturgy and the pastoral associate here at the parish. I've been director of music since 1988. I've been on the staff full time since 1995 um, and been the uh, associate since then. When I first came here as music director, uh, this organ was still in use, but clearly in disrepair um, and around that time late 1980s um, is when we bought an electric console which is uh, which is down on the, the floor of the church um, and we stopped using the pipe organ because we didn't want to do more damage to it um, by by uh, continuous use well as our pastor father Ed said a lot of you know resources that we have here as a parish go into our service um, to those in poverty in our neighborhood um, but we would really love to you know have um, people who are um, interested in preserving uh, a historic uh, instrument like this to if they would want to help us out and restore it it really would be nice to uh, get it back in use to have um, to have concerts and recitals here it gets more people in our door and more, more people um, coming in to see this historic and beautiful church that we have. I thought it might be a bellow noise that requests more than it is a pipe. It's about the same size, no? The organ of St. Joseph might be larger. I think, it's, be larger. I think it's larger. Look at that, yeah. huh?
Oh, it's uh, the second one there? This yeah, one? I think the coupler. I knew that was second. Exhaust there. Yeah, this is definitely not uh, 130 years old either. <laughs> and you can see that the um, reservoir was re leathered at some point, but this white leather uh, obviously is not that old either. Um, the Shrine of St. Joseph have these wooden boots yeah. as well. I didn't remember those. Yeah, they're quite a few missing. Yeah. And there are monkey quints somewhere on the pedal, or is that in the grate? Well, uh, the grate probably okay. with a 16 foot. Because mm. there are, some of those are in the facade and then the bottom. Yeah, let's see if we find them. Should be in the front. Horst found the cipher. I think it's right here. It's a monkey pipe, a small pipe, a deck pipe, which gives out of the acoustic 16 foot. Use a wooden reed, Martin, in the pedal. Yeah, the quality notes missing. Yeah. So that's the monkey quint. Yeah. It's got the little. The main pipe, I think, that is split in it. Yeah. It came loose. There's, yeah. one, there's another one, there's maybe two pipes on each side, mm -hmm. so it starts with E. So the bottom 16s are actually yeah. 8 foots with yeah. a quint attached, I see. Definitely have some damaged pipes. See the canvas, it's been patched. It's still the original canvas on the bottom of the wind chest. We have a few little patches here and there. The swell above us. Yes. Oh, you I'm up in the swell.
remnants of a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see that? Almas. No, let's see. It falls apart after 80 years. It oh, apart. well, like the animals are decomposing <laughs> after 80 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the organ is really in very cool shape. Um, there's some vandalism in it. Mm -hmm. The pipes, you know, when you look at the pipes, the trackers are broken. They don't break on their own. Somebody goes in there, maybe by accident, with their foot. So. It is a major job to take this organ out and restore it. The council is reversed, which is an additional uh, large amount of work. It would be very nice. It can be done, but uh, it requires a lot of funds. A person who puts his heart into this and just keeps going until it's finished. So, I would think if a single person works on it, it would be a two-year project. It's a lot yeah, of it's <laughs> the panels on each side, so you, I'm kind of puzzled how the pump system worked. There are three bellows underneath, and Jeremy called the Schöpfer, the little mm -hmm. ladle, to furnish the air. Three people had to pump the organ. I cannot figure out how the mechanism is. Huh. Obviously, it was not necessary, you know, when the electric motor was installed. But, uh, but those strippers are still there? Or they're still, uh, they there. still there. But yeah. they're, they're nailed shut so that they don't fall down. Yeah. But if to find a good person, that will be the main thing. Yeah, uh, and someone who is really uh, uh, um, yeah, is good as, uh, 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 at restoration work. Yeah, That's yeah. not necessarily the same person that builds great new organs because right. uh, the, the, uh, I mean, to really find your, uh, uh, as you said, your heart uh, for a particular instrument and, and make that uh, playable and, and, and work again, as, that's, that's, I think it's a gift to have that. Uh, but th there are people who do that and do it very well. Yeah. Yeah. The organ really has to be dismantled, has to be brought down. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some work can be done in the tower, that's a nice area to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's probably not just one person, but one person that uh, uh, specialized on uh, like these mechanical things. That's not necessarily the same uh, guy that will do the best work, uh, work on the pipe, uh, yeah. uh, the pipe system. So Horst and Martin, thank you so much for giving us a little tour, walkthrough of this instrument. Uh, 1874, we think, uh, J.G. Pfeffer instrument yep. uh, here in his family parish, which is still going strong. They're getting ready for mass, so we got to get out of here pretty quick. Um, but tell me what you think of the organ, its situation here. Well, of course, it shows its age. Uh, it needs a major renovation. And it takes somebody who has you no know, interest in this instrument and he has to kind of move into this church and live on the balcony for maybe a year and a half wow. <laughs> with some help. And uh, he, it will be very rewarding. Well, we hope that the we hope that the uh, the funds yeah. someday come through that we can see yeah, this instrument yeah. playing again. It's amazing to see all that historic original woodwork, though, and, right, and as right. complicated as that reverse console is. It's yes, really yes. yeah. And I think it would definitely be worth it, uh, just uh, uh, for the fact that it really hasn't been altered. There's nothing that has been added to or taken away or uh, modernized or updated. It's basically the original instrument from 74 or perhaps earlier. We are not quite sure. Yeah. We'll do yeah. some research. On that. Well, it's interesting to see, and we'll be back to see if anything happens here at the Church of St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, remember, for streaming classical organ music 24 hours a day, you can visit any of our three streaming stations, OrganLive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. If you'd like to help us make more of these videos, uh, you can support us by going to organ.media and just click on the support tab where you can donate online. 
online. We need your help to continue visiting these wonderful historic instruments. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you next time.